Hello, and welcome to a Media Depot exclusive tutorial. My name is Kevin Angel, and I will be teaching you the basics of editing video in Adobe Premiere CC 2014. To help save time, we have created nine chapters so you can skip the sections you feel comfortable with. If you are just now starting to use Premiere, either click the first chapter or stick with us for a few moments and we will start from the very beginning. If you have any questions about this tutorial or video editing in general, feel free to ask any of our expert staff wearing green lanyards and we will be happy to assist. The first step is getting a scratch disk. Step two, setting up the video project folder. Step three, creating a new project. Step four, creating a new sequence. Five is understanding the layout. Six, importing clips into the timeline. Seven gets into basic editing features. Eight is manipulating green screen footage. And nine is exporting your project and uploading to YouTube. Simply click one of the boxes to begin or stay with us for a few moments and we will start from the very beginning. All right, let's begin. Step one, getting a scratch disk. Before you begin editing, it is absolutely crucial you have a scratch disk. A scratch disk is a hard disk drive that has space dedicated for only temporary storage. This can be a hard drive, USB drive, or SD card. Not only do these drives prevent you from losing your project, they also drastically improve performance speeds while editing. If you don't have a hard drive already, don't worry. All you need to do is bring a student ID to the media library located in the back of the media depot and check one out. You will be able to keep the hard drive for seven days and renew it once. Once you have obtained a hard drive, plug it in and let's move to the next step. Step two, setting up the video project folder. Once the drive becomes recognizable, double click the icon on the desktop to enter the drive. Right click in the drive and select the option to create a new folder. Name this folder whatever you want, just make sure you know it is for your video project. For this tutorial, we shall name ours Example Video Project Folder. Make sure every element you use for your project is saved in this folder. This is very important. Any files not saved in this folder will be deleted as soon as you log off. So I repeat, save every file you use for this video in this folder. Once you have your folder created, click the Applications folder on the dock, find the purple square that says PR, and click it once. Wait a couple moments for the application to load up as we moved into the next step. Step three, creating a new project. Once the main interface loads up, select New Project. Under the Create New section, this will open up the New Project interface. First off, where it says Name, type in the name for your video project. For this example, we will name our project Example Video Project. Where it says Location, click Browse on the right side of the interface, locate and select the folder you created in the previous step. For us, that will be the Example Video Project folder, click OK. Now click the Scratch Disks tab under the location and make sure these five options say same as project. Once you have verified these options are pointing to the folder previously created on your hard drive, go on ahead and click OK and we can move to the next step. Step four, creating a new sequence. At the top of the screen, click File, New, Sequence. This will bring up the new sequence interface. If you know you have shot your video with a certain resolution, under the Sequence Presets tab, select Accordingly. If you are unsure as to which format your video was shot in, go on ahead and use the default we use here at the Media Depot. Click the drop-down arrow to the left of HDV and select the last option, HDV 720p30. This means you will be editing in high definition at a resolution of 1280 by 720 at 30 frames per second. Once you have selected and highlighted a preset, click OK at the bottom right of the interface. You should now have a timeline visible at the bottom right hand side of the application. We can now move into step 5, understanding the layout. Step 5, understanding the layout. If this is your first time using Adobe Premiere CC 2014 or any Adobe Premiere for that matter, this program may look very daunting. Don't worry, it is not difficult once you understand each of the basic sections and tools. To begin, let's talk about the media browser. The media browser is where all of the files you will use for your project are located. Go on ahead and click the media browser tab near the bottom left hand corner of the screen. Select the hard drive you saved your video project folder to, and then select your video project folder. For us, that is the example video project folder. As you can see, all of the files here are the same as the files in your video project folder. This list automatically updates whenever you add files to that folder. 
For this example, we will go on ahead and add a green screen clip to the folder and watch it update in the media browser. And there it is. Once again, make sure every file you use for your project is added into this folder. This is not only to help with performance speeds, but will also make sure you don't lose your project. To the right of the Media Browser tab is the Effects tab. This tab includes all of the transitions and effects for video as well as audio. We will dig a little more into this tab in the 8th chapter. Above the Media Browser is the Source Monitor and Effect Control section. The Source Monitor allows you to select certain sections of clips you wish to add into the timeline. This we will cover in the next step. The Effect Controls tab is where you can manipulate the basic as well as advanced features of clips located in the timeline. To the right of the Source Monitor and Effect Controls tab is the Program Monitor. Think of this as a mini TV you can watch your content on. This mini TV can be expanded to full screen by clicking inside, highlighting the section, and pressing the tilde button. Below the Program Monitor is the timeline you have recently created, equipped with three video tracks and three audio tracks. The timeline can be expanded and contracted by dragging the handles on the left and right sides of the horizontal scroll bar. This really helps for more precise editing. Between the timeline and the previously mentioned media browser is the toolbar. The toolbar has several different tools that allow you to fine tune the clips you will begin to place in the next chapter. Speaking of the next chapter, let's go on ahead and move to it. Step 6, placing clips into the timeline. Let's go back to the media browser covered in the last step and double click a video file. As you can see, double clicking the video file opens up the file in the source monitor in its entirety. If we want to add the entire clip into the timeline, we simply drag the clip from anywhere in the picture to the timeline. If you get a clip mismatch warning, which you will, either click change sequence settings or keep existing settings. If we want to take the entire clip of just video and no audio, click the film reel button and drag it into the timeline. If we want to take the audio from the clip and no video, click the sound button and drag it into the timeline to an available audio track. If we only want a certain section of the video, drag the playhead to where you want the clip to start, press the in button or I on your keyboard. Now drag the playhead to where you want the clip to end and hit out or O on the keyboard. The highlighted section you have just created will be the portion of the clip that goes into the timeline. Click and drag from anywhere in the picture to the timeline, or simply the audio or video if needed. Now that you understand adding clips into the timeline, let's move to step 7, understanding the basic editing features. Step 7, understanding the basic editing features. Now that we have a clip or two in the timeline, let's learn how to manipulate them. First off, to zoom in to see these clips a little better, we can use the handles at the left and right hand sides of the horizontal scroll bar located at the bottom of the timeline. Now that we have zoomed in to see the clip a little easier, let's say for instance, we don't want a certain section of this video. If we look in our tools bar to the left of the timeline, you'll see a razor blade. Go on ahead and click the razor blade, then click anywhere in the clip. This will split the clip wherever you click. You can then go back to the toolbar, select the selection tool, select the area of the clip you do not want any longer and click delete. You can also drag the right and left sides of the clip with the selection tool to make the clip shorter or longer. To make a clip bigger or smaller, you can do this effect in the Effect Controls tab. To do this, highlight a clip in the timeline, then click the Effect Controls tab. Let's say we wanted to make the clip smaller. Click the drop down arrow next to Motion. Click and drag the 100 to the left or down to make the clip smaller, or to the right and up to make the clip larger. In the same motion tab, you can change the position as well as rotation of a clip simply by manipulating the numerical values. If your clip has volume levels that are too loud or too soft, you can easily change the volume by highlighting the clip you want to change and selecting the Effect Controls tab at the top left. Click the arrow to drop down the volume option and drag the number 0 to the right or left depending on your desired volume level. Right is louder and left is softer. Watching through a project in Premiere is simple. The playhead is located just above the timeline. This playhead is telling the program monitor where in the timeline to play the video. Drag the playhead to the beginning of the project and then press the play button or simply press spacebar on your keyboard to watch through it. Now, we should have a basic understanding of editing clips in Premiere. Let's dig into the next step of editing green screen footage. Step 8. Editing green screen footage. Video shot in front of the green screen is incredibly simple to manipulate the background of. First, click the clip in the timeline you want to change the green screen of. Click the Effects tab just to the right of the media browser, 
on the bottom left of your screen. In the search bar, type in Ultra Key. Double click or drag the Ultra Key effect to your desired clip. Click the Effects Control tab at the top left of your screen. Click the arrow to the left of Ultra Key to drop down the options. Where it says Key Color, to the right is an eyedropper tool. Select the eyedropper tool and then select the color of green in the program monitor you want to take out. Usually just above the right shoulder is a perfect place to start. Once you have clicked the green, the background should turn to black. Now click the arrow drop down the Matte Generations option set. Change the bottom option that says Pedestal from 10 to 100. You should now have an almost perfectly black background behind you. Now to change the background, simply place a photo or video layer underneath at the same time as the layer with the green screen and it will appear behind you or your talent. Now let's go on ahead and move to the last step of exporting your project and getting that bad boy on YouTube. Step 9. Finally, exporting and uploading to YouTube. To export your video and upload it to YouTube and Blackboard, simply follow these few steps. At the top left of your screen, click File. Near the bottom is Export. Place your mouse over that and expand it. Click the first option, Media. In this interface, the first option is Format. Click the drop-down box to select H.264. Under that option is the Preset option. Drop down that box and select YouTube 720p HD. Below that should be an underlined word that says Sequence 1. Click that once to open up the location determining where you will export your final project to. Select the desktop as the location and rename your project accordingly. For us, we will name ours Example Video Project Final. Once you have done that, select the box at the bottom that says Use Maximum Render Quality and click Export. The video should take about 5 to 10 minutes to export to the desktop. To upload your final video on YouTube, go to YouTube, sign in using your YouTube or Gmail account, username and password, click Upload at the top right and select the file you previously exported. Links for Blackboard can be obtained once the video is processed under the Share tab. And there it is. You should now be able to edit video proficiently in CC 2014. Thanks for watching our tutorial on the basics of editing. If you have any questions, feel free to ask any of our staff members wearing a green lanyard and we will be happy to assist. Take it easy, stay smooth, and be a rock star. I'm Kevin Angel. Thanks for watching our tutorial.